welcome. Today we have a presentation by Jennifer Hine. Jennifer Hine is, is, visiting the, is visiting MSSU as part of the 2020 Collection Assessment for Preservation Program. The program is designed to help small and mid-sized museums receive prioritized recommendations for improving the care of their collections. Hine has been working with IMLS for 20 years. She has a wealth of experience as a museum specialist, historic site assessor, and grant consultant for more than 40 historic museums. She has worked with the Indiana War Memorial, Indiana State Archives, Indiana History Museum, and Cincinnati Museum Center, among others. She also enjoys opportunities to do outreach with the public, such as the Indiana Roadshow of the Indiana Historic Society, to educate people on the preservation of their personal objects, preserving the cultural history of a region. According to Hein, we should all be concerned with these factors so that our cultural history collections and antiques are cared for. Only then will conservators like myself be able to treat the more limited number of projects for which they have time. So welcome. Thank you. Nice intro. And it was kind of Indiana heavy. Um, I've lived in Indiana since 1990, since before some of you were born. <laughs> And I've actually enjoyed doing the federal grant programs because I've been in 10 different states, um, all the way from Wisconsin, Kansas. I went to Arkansas, sorry, I went to Arkansas once. And uh, so I've seen different states and learned about crops that they grow in different states. And I try to actually understand what's happening in the site, in the town, or the county. Most of the places I visited are county and city historic sites. And so I've only done about five university visits, some of them much larger. The state of Michigan, I worked with a wet wood project and <clears throat> I'm glad you don't have that. <laughs> I actually worked um, several times for them because of the intensity of that project. So one of the things that I've learned after visiting 40 sites is I have a fine arts background. I actually started in fine arts and so I'm a very visual hands-on person and the federal government requires us, oops, it's when I get close to that, um, requires us to get a lot of printed documents, so I'll just point instead of walking. And so those are actually printed things that I leave, and it's basic reading material from different sources. That entire line in the center is the FEMA disaster plan and so you now can say that you have a disaster plan that's specific for your site if you fill out the back two pages with the phone numbers. Um, the nicest thing I have actually done is put it on, a lot of them on digital files so that's your copy of some of the documents on that little flash drive if that's the right name. <laughs> and anybody that wants my card is hanging out there. So anything that you see from here over, I leave, except my books. I have a few books down here that are basic intros that maybe you, you guys might want to look at. These are actually project-oriented books on this side. And this one is whenever you ask any question, whether it's lighting or um, let's see, if we'll find an appropriate one for your site. Metal and silver, there's a section. And so I have it sectioned off so that you can see. I worry about the care of the preservation of all the objects and all the materials. I'm a materials specialist, but I'm an organic materials specialist, meaning anything that was natural and that rots. Uh, I'm, oops, that's how I do it. Um, that's my specialty area. 
and I have a um, dissertation in pest and mold of organic materials, if that's not specialty enough. So that's why I'm so concerned with pest. And I leave you with this cute little book that has diagrams that are really beautiful <laughs> of the pest blown up. <clears throat> and the nicest thing is, this is actually for your quarantine area. These are little documents and it has directions so that you can put it in with the container. And for your amusement, you can pass this around. These are the pests that I'm worried about. Spiders are good, so when they come in from the outside is a little bit of a problem because that's close to an outside access, but it's the little guys. The smaller they are, the more of a problem they are. And um, I lost my little visual, but I have uh, some really interesting blow-ups of microscopic pest that I used to lose a few interns when I would show them we were working trying to get them out of wool. Wool textiles are actually the most pest infested and that's actually my specialty area. <laughs> but thankfully you have mostly cotton and plant material textiles so you don't have that. So that's good. <laughs> You just have wood, which is a natural material. It's a tree, and we actually found a really nice specimen of a uh, some kind of root or something where you can see the internal core because it dried and split. So, yeah. So this is actually just the list, and you can see that you're actually taking care of a lot of things, and I don't really need to... Um, belabor the points of this. Uh, the temperature control and humidity control is the most important thing and they've been monitoring it and they have a nice little inside monitor and an outside monitor and so just keeping track of that is important. This morning we were discussing buffers and basically it's cotton. I left, oops, sorry. I haven't figured out how I do that. Um, I left cotton towels and microfiber towels. I've used those microfiber towels, which I don't have to hold up, sorry, um, for 20 years. And now they're so common, car detailers love them because everything that I brought is reusable and washable. So it's a really practical, um, addition to any collection and when you go through museum schools they tell you to buy buffer paper and rag paper and that's actually not reusable. You can try a little bit but uh, and it's really expensive. So the cotton towels um, and the linen towels, they actually have some great towels. My best set of towels, which I didn't bring you any, you can actually buy at Michael's because they have those dish towels that are cotton. Those are the nicest buffers and they're washable. So it's really important to have buffers near anything that's organic because it stabilizes the humidity. Those of us that are wearing a mask, which we all are now, will know that you get a lot of humidity just from breathing and it's harder to actually not sweat. So that's the same with the organic materials that are in there. Um, we're, we're actually going to do the light controls. Um, oh, I, uh, before I go on to that, I wanted to actually flip through here a little bit. Oops. Because the most important thing that I told Maggie and Tracy is Safety is something that you all are worried about now because of a virus, but because of the materials that are in there, that's actually an important safety consideration, but the most important reason that you wear gloves is not to protect the object, 
it's to protect you because your fingertips this applies to your COVID the fingertips are the most absorbent part of your body and your toes but they're always in there so I don't wear sandals anymore so um, be careful with that and um, I always wear gloves or a glove when I work with objects because the oils and the acids in your skin are easily transferred and with textiles it will show up 20 years later you'll have handprints because <laughs> someone touched it and if you have any old quilts you can see that on the top part of the quilt so um, the staff safety is the most important thing that I want you to remember and here's the little demonstration people used to not be used to mask this is actually a Japanese mask that was created 20 years ago because they have such bad carbon pollution this is double silk so they've been concerned about breathing for a long time <laughs> The good news here, you've been working with this as a registration method, the past perfect. That's just a little advertisement for past perfect. <laughs> and and uh, the most important thing with registration I was discussing is less handling, less cleaning covers. So that's what we were working on this morning. It's just more information. And you have all kinds of different um, acid-free tags. So the um, repeat at this point is just that it's very important to control the humidity. Whoops. And I'm going to skip through some of these. Oh, okay. Except when they don't apply. This one is something that Christine had been doing. She found some when they did a move. They did two moves. And so I'm really very happy that you have this space because it started in a, I would call that space like underground closet <laughs> and it multiplied out to where the objects have more breathing space and that's better for the object life oh gosh I'm sorry it's advancing all by itself isn't it um, I think that's okay this is actually whoops how can I stop this um, I think Whoops, uh-oh, <laughs> technology and me. <laughs> um, I was trying to show you. I leave you with um, labels that I bought in giant rolls. So these are yours, the handle with care, I think are the most important. So if you have any of the taller boxes, they are going to put different ones in containers. And if they're not too obtrusive, I like it if you use them, even if they're over on the side. Um, I do actually leave you with two uh, little booklets. This is actually my favorite one, you can tell. <laughs> the insect pest. And this is the general uh, textiles and book. So the textiles were a question in there. there it, the details are addressed really, really well in here. Um, this is a We'll have to talk about this a little bit more. The Pacific Silver Cloth. This is great stuff that was designed so that your silver sets don't tarnish. But they have a lot of African metals. That's the only way to describe those. They're all different types of metals depending on the region and the nation. So the the tarnish thing. We'll have to talk about how to use that with this. And then the lighting, I actually 
I'm going to try to persuade you to put up the blue, I found one, one of mine, the blue fade strips. And then the theory is that if you leave it for a year, this is the only thing you have to change in a year, and then you pull it out so that um, whenever you change it, you write the date, and then you pull it out to the next level. So there's five different levels. So supposedly you get five different fade strips, and then that'll show in five years or 10 years how much it's faded. And there's 10 different fabrics there. Because I'll go around with this little meter in a minute, and I'll gauge the light level. We talked about it yesterday, but the light level, where's my light level, there we go, is the most important thing to try to monitor. And we talked about possibly coming up with a way to darken that side without darkening this side. Because as it stands right now, the level in here, ooh, it's high. <laughs> okay. Um, we have it in Lux and foot candles, but whew, right under the light is 100 foot candles, but when you go over here, it goes down to 89, and if you actually do the bouncing thing, it's only 25, but I regret to say that you're supposed to try to keep it under 20. Yeah, that's why it'd be nice if you could actually dampen the lights in there. Because the more light you get, this is actually in that information, the more light you get over time, the more it fades. That makes sense, everybody knows that. And so the, it, this compares daylight, incandescent, and canister lights. And that's actually in the information that you have. So, yeah, I didn't want to annoy everyone yesterday and show you it's really bright in here, but it's great for videos, right? <laughs> um, the uh, only thing that we, oops, sorry, pushed the wrong button. We did actually look at personal safety and I am going to try to figure out, oops, the right button to push. This is actually an important thing that we've been discussing this morning. These are actually uh, paint drop cloths. So oh, I don't have a stop. Can't figure out a stop. It advances by itself. Yeah, maybe I should have left you advance it on with yours. But um, this is the disaster bucket. But basically, that's a disaster plan. And hopefully, you can maybe put together a little corner where you actually have a bucket with some things in case you have some water issue or some um, dirt issue that happens. So you don't have to go scrounging around for maintenance supplies. And different historic homes have, uh, I used to sell a large one and then a small one. And so you'll, sometimes in the literature you'll see that I used to call them preservation kits and sell them at museum uh, groups, but now I just hand off the information and make you shop at Walmart. Um, I left some twill tapes, and we're actually going to use twill tapes as holders. Uh, you had heard wire, the word wire. I don't like wire because it's, it cuts things. So we have one inch twill tape that we're going to use to um, suspend things. That's just the disaster stuff. Oh, and here's the silver cloth cut and padded on boards. So we actually I'll show you another example and we'll, we'll discuss the silver cloth. How you can use it in a more organized way so it looks nice on a buffer board. This is actually something that's really important. Those plastic paint drop cloth covers. That's my little advertisement for 
Lowe's and Menards and any of those other stores that carry them. If you can find those, those are actually really great as covers because they have a buffer on one side and a barrier on the other. And that's really hard to find. So I use those all the time, especially when you're covering a table. I was actually really pleased seeing your mission statement. And the African art collection does inspire a global perspective. And right now, because of our times, that's really something we've all been aware of. So I'm really happy that you're trying to, or have gotten the secrets out of the closet, is gems out of the closet, <laughs> and, and are opening it more to the public. And I think that the African nations are so diverse that it's very nice. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I turned everything off. <laughs> um, I think it's a very diverse collection, even though it's Africa. Africa is a huge continent with a lot of states or nations, and they're all under individual control. And so I've heard that a Caribbean specialist is coming next semester to discuss the cultural history of the objects. And there's just so many stories to tell with the wonderful public relations collection that you have and the specialty personal object collection that you have that uh, I like to see it used in the gallery studies classes and in the African history classes and any other class that it fits into as a visiting space. And so this particular space I think is a nice student work collection space and I'm actually really pleased to see it get to the point where you can actually access it without too much access. And uh, so I'm very pleased that you've hired me and invited me here and hopefully my taping turned out all right <laughs> and we shall see um, how much improvement happens but the most important thing that the grant stresses is it's short-term, mid-term, and long-term plans. And every group has to decide how many years that entails. I usually say short-term is what you can do now, and we've been working on them. Mid-term is maybe in the next five years. And long-term is just long-term. Um, what you hope for, the architect that visited yesterday was asking about Christine's long-term plans, and I thought that was very idealistic. <laughs> um, so that's what you like to at least plan for, that you're going in the right direction. So, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Would you like to ask about anything in particular? I think I covered uh, the most important things. Oh. The only thing that we didn't really discuss today that we talked about yesterday is I would like to see the beautiful framed pieces into something, even if it's wood. Um, a flip file is what we call it. Um, and I think that's the only good picture. Oh, and then, of course, I have more pest, pest infestation. This is actually paper that was infested. Um, oh, there's my great picture. Yeah, I scared away a couple of people like that. These are really tiny. But yeah, that's a really big picture. So that's actually one of the things I get most concerned about. It's called sand or frass, which is bug doo doo. Yep. And people pay and get their dogs picked up after, but we're trying to do it with little, little creatures. So, yeah. So, thank you very much. I appreciate your attention. And um, come up and look at my photo books and ask me any questions. They're actually all detailed there. Thank you very much. <laughs>